Happy Tuesday. It's Terry with Eat Plant Based. And I am so sorry about the technical difficulties. I have no idea. But we are, it said I was live earlier <laughs> and I was talking to everybody. I got 11 minutes in before I realized we weren't actually live, even though, <laughs> even though it said it was live. So I apologize for being late. Uh, I actually was early. <laughs> But um, I just didn't know you couldn't see me. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't see your comments. But I'm glad you're here. I hope now I'll be able to see you guys and your comments. And, uh, and we can get this show on the road. <laughs> We're making chocolate mousse today. Um, it's a physician's committee for, for the responsible... Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine recipe. I am a Food for Life instructor for them. And this is a recipe that we have made in classes. Oh my goodness, I've been an instructor since 2015 and I have made this so many times. Um, probably not a hundred times, but a whole lot of times for many, many hundreds and hundreds of people. And uh, the main ingredient in this recipe. Oh, there you guys are. Sid. Hi, Sid. I'm glad you're here. Oh, you're the first one that I can see. Uh, and so, um, this is one that when people see, uh, like the main ingredients, I dropped a box. There, okay. Um, it's tofu. Uh, in classes, we would have all these ingredients set up on the tables, you know, before we got started with the demo, and people would see tofu. These are people who aren't plant-based. We were just trying to get their curiosity. Hi, Leslie. Hey, oh, I'm glad you're here, too. <laughs> um, and people would panic when they saw tofu because some people really don't care for tofu, but I think it's a texture thing. When um, it's made into a mousse, there is no texture problem because it's a smooth, silky, creamy uh, texture. Hi, Laura Blanford. Um, is it cutting out a lot for others? I hope not. Um, um, you just wouldn't believe, Laura, the technical issues, but it was on my end. I couldn't get the thing going. I'm on my laptop today rather than my cell phone, and so I'm less familiar with how to get it going. So all that hiccup in the beginning was my fault. Okay, Leslie said it's good for her. Bonnie Darby, thank you. Nope, smooth video on my end. I'm so glad. I'm not kidding you. You know how nerve-wracking technology is when you're not a techie person? Um, so my sister isn't here today, but she is going to be on here putting up links. Another thing that I noticed, but see, it was on the other video. When I was setting this video up, it let me type in a link, uh, any link that I wanted to. So I put it to the uh, chocolate mousse recipe that we're going to be making to the website, but I have no idea if it held that setting and if it did, where you'll find that chocolate mousse. But my sister is going to be, um, she is on the road today in South Carolina. They're having some plumbing issues and so they're going to get parts. She said she's going to be tuning in and putting the links up for me. So there she is. <laughs> Thank you, sis, so much. Um, and, uh, Laura says she's excited about this. She's trying to increase, oh, your tofu for the calcium. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and protein too. So this is a great way to do it. Um, a lot of people might not think of chocolate mousse as being like a holiday recipe, but it really is. The neat thing about this recipe is you can eat it as mousse, um, but you can also use it as a pie filling. We have at least three, maybe four, because I think it's four because three of the pie crust recipes on our website uh, are from um, Leanne Campbell, the daughter of Dr. Colin Campbell. She allowed us to publish her uh, pie crust recipes. So you can easily go to the website, Eat Plant Base, and then uh, in the search bar type in pie crust and you'll get all of them because I have one and she has three. So there's a total of four. So if you wanted to take this as a pie, a mousse pie, to a family or a social gathering, uh, this would be a great recipe for that. And I'm telling you, it just takes a few minutes to make. Uh, four main ingredients, uh, five if you, you know, I'll tell you about the fifth one, it's peanut butter if you want to. Used to, and in classes, I never made it with peanut butter. Uh, but my husband is a peanut butter freak. He loves peanut butter, so you can add a tablespoon of peanut butter to this recipe if you want to. Uh, hi, uh, who 
I want to say Dolores. Okay, hi Dolores from New Hampshire. I'm glad you're here too. Um, I'm glad you guys didn't give up on me <laughs> in the beginning with those technical difficulties. But we are going to be giving away three prizes today. Um, if you read like the um, pre preview for this live, I mentioned Dr. Neil Barnard's uh, book on diabetes. Um, when I taught regularly the Food for Life classes for the Physicians Committee, we had we have a diabetes series, and I taught it in four sessions at hospitals um, and medical facilities. And this was our textbook for the classes, and it's really really good. Uh, Dr. Barnard is just wonderful with the way that he presents information. So he's presenting in this book the science, the how tos, and getting started. And then the back of the book is recipes. Uh, there may even be a meal planner in here. I can't really remember, but there are, I mean, this whole thing back here. Yeah, there's meal planners, day three, day four. Um, so it's a great resource. I have plant-based starter kits. Sis, that's not a link. Actually, I did. Uh, there, she'll put up a link uh, for uh, coffee mugs and t-shirts and things like that. But in that same link, if you wanted a plant-based starter kit, um, it's a folder. I should have brought the folder out here with uh, Physicians Committee's uh, literature and um, DVD, a set of two DVDs, and a book of your choice. And this is one of the books that you can choose if you want. I think they're thirty. I think they're thirty-five dollars, guys, the, for the for the whole kit. Um, but we're just going to give the book away today to one lucky winner in just a few minutes, and we're going to give away an Eat Plant Based coffee mug. And we're going to give away an Eat Plant Based, well, let me get it dirty, t-shirt to somebody. We've got uh, two, three prizes to give away today. And so, actually, why don't we just give one away right now? Let's give away, let's give away the coffee mug. Now that I can see your comments. Um, oh, hi, Sharon from Florida. I'm glad you're here, too. The comments keep rolling up. It was so funny, guys, when we were having technical difficulties. Oh, she's talking about Dr. Barnard. Leslie, where did it go? You were talking about. He is very considerate in his delivery of the facts. I just love him. I just love him, too. Guys, look at him. He's in his 60s. Is that not amazing? He doesn't look his age to me. And he is such a good speaker. I've heard him speak in person, of course, um, when I went for training in D.C. to be a Food for Life instructor. And he is just an amazing a uh, compassionate man and um, so easy to listen to and so easy to understand even when he's talking about science. He brings it down to the level that we can all understand. Um, so I'm going to give away the mug. Thank you, sis, for putting up the subscribe. That's She put up the subscribe um, link, guys. So that's really important. And it's not a subscribe to the Facebook page, which I love it when you do. But it's for the website, and so that's where all of the information and resources are there. You can go to them all the time. I hope all of you are already subscribers, but if you're not, please do. I send out an email on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with um, recipes mostly, but also articles and things. Did you guys see the recipe we, I put up this week for Chex Party Mix? Oh, my goodness. Uh, it is amazing. We've already made two batches this year. I came up with that recipe last year because, uh, you know, regular Chex Party Mix is made with butter. Um, and so that's not something that we we eat uh, anymore. So I found a way to make it just as good without the butter or any oil. So you guys need to check that out. Um, and another thing, people who subscribe had that um long before anybody else. So if you want the latest from Eat Plant Based, please subscribe uh, and you'll get all of the latest information straight to your email uh, inbox. So uh, consider doing that. And okay, so who wants a mug? Let me see who's on here. Does any, oh, oh yeah, and the chocolate mug. She put up the, uh, I have a recipe for a chocolate mug cake that you can just make right in your mug. It's a one dish other than your fork. Um, you make it in the microwave in 1.5 seconds. I mean, no, hold on, that's not true. 1.5 minutes. <laughs> so a minute and five seconds is perfect for my microwave, and yours should be pretty close to that. And so if you would like to have a mug, you can order them off of the website. They're $9, or we're going to give one. We're going to give one uh, away right now. Oh, Pam, hi from Chapel Hill. 
vacationing in New York. Oh, that's awesome, Pam. Uh, good for you for vacationing. Um, Cindy, good afternoon. I'm out at lunch. I will watch the replay. Good deal. Cindy's on here all the time, Cindy King. Um, so, uh, awesome. I don't see anybody saying you want the mug. Do you want the mug? Somebody's going to get it. Um, so, I'll hold off for a minute. Oh, I lost my thing. We're going to get started on the recipe, and then you guys tell me. I'll tell you what. Go ahead and tell me if you want the mug, if you want the book, uh, the diabetes book, or if you want the t-shirt. Just start putting them up there uh, while I am making this recipe, and then uh, we'll just pick some folks to uh, be winners, and we'll mail them out to you. Okay, so the four main ingredients for this recipe are tofu, um, cocoa powder, cocoa, um, and a sweetener. You can, in classes, we always use agave um, nectar. You can use maple syrup if you want to. Um, you can use date syrup if you want to. There, you can use your preferred sweetener. Um, but you know, the original recipe called for melting instead of putting in sweetener, they called for melting chocolate chips. But um, we were trying to keep the calories down a little bit, and so um, switched it to cocoa and we'll just say maple syrup. So it helps with that. Um, let me see what you guys are saying because you are really all tuning in now. Okay, I'm going to go back to see the first ones because people are all over the place. Uh, okay. Leslie says, I have one and have made, oh, the mug cake recipe. Oh, you have the mug. Yeah, you won the mug. Or maybe you ordered it. I don't remember, but I do remember sending um, sending it and a couple things to you. Okay, Sharon, is it group? G-R-U-P-E. I think it's group. Uh, she wants the shirt. Okay, so Sharon, I'm going to send you the shirt. You'll need to private message me your mailing address and your size. We've got small, medium, large, and extra large. So if you send me a private message, we will get the shirt out to you this week. Um, Laura, Laura Blanford. Okay, Laura wants the book. Um, so, Laura, same thing. Just private message me your mailing address, and we'll get the book to you. And then uh, we'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going, and then I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna set this over here, so I won't forget. We're gonna give away the mug next, okay? I'll space them out just a little bit. I hope I remember that. If I don't remember the mug, guys, then start shouting at me before we get off of here so that I will remember. So, uh, the, those are the main ingredients and vanilla. So, we've got tofu, uh, cocoa powder, uh, your sweetener, like date syrup, maple syrup, whatever, and vanilla. Those are the four ingredients. I'm going to top mine with some chopped um, strawberries. I've put blueberries on it before. You could even top it with uh, vegan chocolate chips if you wanted to. I think, uh, especially for Christmas, the red uh, and the strawberries would be a beautiful topping for it. Um, and sometimes I do both, strawberries and blueberries. No matter what you top it with or if you don't top it with anything. You could even put, um, you know, you could put shredded uh, dried coconut on there too. But it'll be beautiful. Um, and, oh my goodness, delicious. I kid you not, it is absolutely delicious. Like I said, I have not run with all the hundreds and hundreds of class participants that I've had over the years. Not a single person has not liked this mousse recipe, even if they panicked when they saw tofu uh, when we were going to make it. Even if they panicked, nobody ever said, oh, I don't care for it. They all said, I can't believe this is tofu. So let's talk about tofu for just a minute because you have some options. This is shelf-stable tofu. You can find it in some grocery stores. I'm not going to kid you. It's a, our local Ingalls grocery store has it in the Asian section. I'm sure Publix does, of course. Whole Foods and places like that would have it. Um, some grocery stores may not, but Asian markets, if you go to Asian markets, which I highly recommend, you're going to get some good deals. Uh, they will most always have it. Um, and the good thing about this type of tofu is silken tofu. Um, I, we call it Japanese tofu, but you can, uh, the good thing about it is 
you don't have to worry about it going bad so quickly like you do with the refrigerated tofu. This stuff you have to use fairly quickly. I'm really not sure. Probably three weeks or so you need to use it or it's, you know, or freeze it. Use it or freeze it. Uh, but with this, you can keep it in your cabinet and uh, and it stays fresh probably for a year. Don't, don't uh, mark my words on that, but it's surely for a year, I would think. But even though it's silicone tofu, and I know this is backwards for you guys, or is it? I don't know. I can't tell if it is or not, but um, this is the extra firm of the silicone tofu, but I have made this recipe successfully with the soft, uh, I've made it with all of them, with the um, firm and the extra firm. It's great. Now, you'll notice on these shelf-stable ones, there it says 12.3 ounces. I don't remember how many ounces I said for, you know, in the printed recipe. It probably said between 12 and 14. Don't worry if your tofu box, like this one's 12.3 and this one's 14. Don't be going, oh my goodness, she said this or that. Just put the whole thing, the whole block, no matter which kind you have, it's not going to affect the flavor of it. So use what you've got. Um, but yeah, I do love this. Now this type tofu isn't packed in a lot of water. So you would uh, open the box, you might get a few drips out, um, and then you don't have to press it. It's already so soft and not packed in as much water, so you don't have to press it. Um, you can, like I said, I've used this many times. I will tell you the difference between using these two. Even though after you make this, when you chill it in your refrigerator, it's going to thicken up more and get more firm. Um, it will never be extremely firm, like sliceable firm for a pie, uh, if you use the silken tofu. It just doesn't have the texture for that. Um, so if you really want it to be stiff like mousse, and especially if you want to make a pie with it that after chilled can be sliced, you'll want to go with the uh, produce section, I call it Chinese um, tofu, because it's a much firmer, it's packed in water and you do have to drain it and you do have to press it, uh, but it is going to make a much uh, firmer mousse. So you can use either one. If you want it to be more pudding-like, then by all means use this one. If you want it to be more mousse-like, then use the refrigerator type. Um, and the refrigerator type, this is all these brand. Uh, I used extra firm. You can use, you can use, I probably more than likely just regular firm would be, um, if I would have read the box, <laughs> regular firm would probably be easier because blending it in the blender, uh, you may have to add a splash of uh, plant milk to it, like almond milk or soy milk or cashew milk or whatever kind of plant milk you use to make your blender blended. So I am using this type today. So that means I have to drain it and I have to press it. I have this. Sid, are you the one that told me about this? I, for some reason I'm thinking, because in the past um, I didn't have a tofu press, believe it or not. So I would just use my iron skillet. I would put a towel and some paper towels under the uh, tofu and then more paper towels or a towel on top and then put my iron skillet on top and just press it. So if you don't have a tofu press, you don't have to have one. Just get you know, a, a heavy pan or something to press it. But I think, Sid, correct me, it was either you or Leslie, I think, uh, who told me about this. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with tofu presses. There it is. Thank you, sis. Um, and uh, so... Yeah, okay, so, but uh, it was it was great. So I ordered it, and I love it, because uh, you just sit your block in there. I'm going to show you what. Oh, snap. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, live. Don't you love us? I didn't break anything. It sounded like it broke, but it didn't break. Um, but it has these rubber bands on the sides that you can ratchet down uh, on these. And so, and it's in a tray. I'm going to pull the tray out. So my tofu is in there, and it leaves behind the water. I don't know. Hopefully you can see that. It leaves behind the water that it was packed in, um, which is so handy-dandy because it has the holes on the bottom that uh, let it to go out. So this is the block that we're using today. And as I said, it is the produce section type. And if you buy the produce section type and you know that it's going to be expiring pretty soon, not for this recipe. I was going to say freeze it. You definitely freeze it. But be mindful. After you freeze tofu, you cannot use it 
for recipes like this, like creams and sauces and things where you need it to be smooth because freezing it changes the structure. It actually becomes more spongy. Um, and it's suitable for making um, like breakfast scrambles and even chopping it into cubes and including it in stir fries and things like that. But it is not suitable for making mousse after it has been frozen. So keep that in mind when you, um, Oh, Leslie says it wasn't her that told me. Oh, uh, you're still learning about tofu. Okay, tofu. Um, and Shelly says she does have and love this press. So I'm guessing it must be... Um, oh, there's Chris. Evening, Terry. Evening. Oh, because we, we got... He's, he's in the UK. Uh, absolutely pouring across the pond. Don't need a shirt, but do you... <laughs> have an umbrella. Oh, sorry that it's raining on you, Chris, but I am so glad that you are tuning in. Um, this rainy evening, I've been, never had a sweet tooth, but I don't worry. Oh, I, I love that you're tuning in. I'm going to read all of that. Oh, you guys don't have all these either. I didn't even think about that. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in from the UK. It's England, I believe. Um, so, all right, so I'm going to put this tofu in here. Like I said, you're going to have to drain and press it. I'm going to crumble it. Um, I do use a Vitamix. You don't have to have a high-powered blender uh, to make creams and sauces. Uh, my Vitamix that I love, it's a 50, people ask me all the time, it's a 5200 series. And the Physicians Committee gave me one when I taught when I was teaching classes regularly, and then I bought a second one because our classes got big. When I was teaching at the Cancer Center um, in South Carolina, um, we would have like 30, 35 people in there plus staff because they would put an oncology dietitian in there with me, which was so helpful because those patients were going through many different types of um, cancer treatment, and they had specific questions about their diets, which I am not a dietitian definitely not versed with or anything with oncology. Um, so they had people in there, but I had two Vitamixes, two induction burners. Uh, we just had huge classes. Um, and these things are so powerful. I can make food and I use mine absolutely daily. I just want to make sure. Hold on. My sister's sending me a message. Let's see what she says. She said something about pan. Let me see. Uh, pan. Oh, Pam Bradsfield wants the mug. Okay, she's not one I chose for anything else, is she? I hope you're right. I'll go back and watch this, but uh, sis, if you don't mind, <laughs> whoever I said could win them, will you keep a note? Because, oh, they'll send me messages too, and I'll go back and watch it. So, but uh, Pam, my sister says that you want the mug, so let's, we will send you the mug. You private message um, your mailing address. Hopefully, you're in the U.S. Everybody needs to be in the U.S. If you're not Everybody who wins. Uh, if you're not, I have a digital uh, product that I can give you. But for mailing purposes, you have to be in the U.S. Okay, so I've got this crumbled. And uh, next, I'm going to add the uh, sweetener. I'm using agave, guys, agave nectar. But you could use um, you could use whatever. You could use maple syrup, date syrup. If you use honey, you could do honey. If you're vegan and don't do honey, then you could do the bee free honey. Uh, whatever whatever it is that you like. So we've got the sweetener in there. Um, this is just, oh, I should tell you, the um, sweetener, you need a quarter cup, and if you print out the recipe, you'll have that. Um, I'm going to put, I think it says a tablespoon of vanilla, and honestly, I go a little heavy on the vanilla because I love that vanilla flavor. Um, People have asked me, can you leave it out? Sure, you could leave it out if you don't have vanilla. I just like the flavor that it produces uh, with the chocolate and the sweets. So I really do like it. So you're going to use a quarter cup of cocoa powder as well. So that is the main ingredient. The only thing is, because I'm using, I want a stiffer mousse. Uh, so I'm using this. So I'm, and me and you, if you're making this along with me, very possibly, uh, I'm, I, I'm actually going to go ahead and put just a little bit of plant milk because I know there's really not enough liquid in here for these blades to turn well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add, let's just say, let's start with a tablespoon of plant milk. And this isn't 
for flavor or anything else, it's to get these ingredients to be able to spin. So I'm just going to put like a tablespoon. We'll do that. And I've got more. So we may end up, you know, just depending. But my goal is that I want it to be nice and uh, fluffy and firm instead of pudding-like. All right, this is going to be loud for just a minute. Um, and uh, hopefully, I've got my tamper, so it's going to help me push this to the bottom. So bear with me for just a second, okay? something thick they create those air pockets at the bottom and so the ingredients might not hit the blade so we're going to do that I think I will just add just a splash of the I'm using almond milk let's try it again with my creamy with my creamy mousse now so I want to show you what it looks like and the texture that it's going to be right after you make it and like I said um, when it chills in your refrigerator let me get a sip hold on in your refrigerator it is going to set up I'll set that there maybe you can see it better it's on top of the cocoa but it'll keep it within the camera range all right, so I just want you to see how thick this is from using um, from using the uh, refrigerated type. See, it's not just pouring off. See, it's pretty thick. I'm trying to see where you can get that. That's how thick it is. And it's I'm gonna I'm gonna put more in here, but I just want you to see the texture and the smoothness. Now, if you're doing like smaller servings, like if you were just gonna. Uh, do it for you know guests and have like a small dish of it. This would make four servings um, but If you're going to put it in, you know, like a good size uh, Container it's more like two or three So uh, so here it is. It's oh my gosh. I'm gonna taste of it real quick. Hold on. I have a spoon I got chocolate on my spoon. Hold on Okay, so but also like I said, you can put peanut butter in it, which um, my husband loves. But yeah, it is absolutely, absolutely delicious. And like I said, to make it even prettier, you can add some. Woohoo! That strawberry jump. You know, at Valentine's Day, this is gorgeous too, with the strawberries, and sprinkle some blueberries in there. You could even put crushed walnuts on top. I mentioned uh, uh, like a shredded co dried coconut. There's so many things, but this is the perfect consistency to put in a pie crust and 
chill it. If, like I, I think, I, guys, I'm gonna tell you when when we had the flub ups earlier. I went for 11 minutes talking, and now I can't remember what I told the completely ghost audience and what I've already told you. But I'll repeat this. I don't know if I said it to you or if it was the flub. But um, if you chill it, then you can slice it and but make it a day ahead. If you make it a day ahead, uh, it gives it more time to get nice and firm and sliceable. I have made it with. Um, this type tofu and put it in a pie crust before, but it never gets the consistency that you want for chocolate mousse. So you can kind of see that's not just pouring out. That's pretty, pretty firm in there. So um, it's a delicious recipe. I do have a, if you wanted to top it with um, whipped cream, I have a homemade whipped cream recipe on the website that is made with aquafaba. Do you guys know what aquafaba is? Um, it's the, the juice or the liquid from cooked chickpeas. Um, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but it is great for, it's crazy how many uses you can do with that, but it's aquafaba, cream of tartar, and um, I have some homemade powdered sugar. You can make it with date uh, sugar, you can make it with pure cane sugar, whatever, uh, but it's made with those three ingredients. And uh, and you can top uh, pudding or pie with it, especially with the holidays coming up. Makes beautiful and delicious. It's crazy how good that stuff is. Only thing with that whipped cream, it only lasts for about 24 hours, and, and then it starts getting kind of runny. So you'll want to make it the day of. All right, let me see what you guys are saying. I think we've given away everything. Um, Laura, do you have other dessert recipes using tofu? Yes, ma'am, I do. Um, I'm trying to think. We have a, uh, if you go to the website and type in the search bar, silken tofu, um, then you'll have, we've got, I'm trying to think. Um, we've got a different things and I just, I've gone blank for the moment, but yes, we do. Um, and you can just, type in silken tofu and we've got one article with a lot of things listed within that article or um, you can just look at all the different ones that will pop up when you type in silken tofu. All of them are either going to be a dessert or we have like ranch dressing, we have vegan mayonnaise, we have vegan sour cream, um, things like that. They're all going to be sauces, dressings, or desserts with the uh, silken tofu, but we, we do love it and uh, it's so easy to use and it is a great way to get in calcium and protein in your diet. So just go on there and, and uh, search for that. Um, Clem, Clem, I love your name. I hope I'm saying that right. Clem um, Melendez, I think, looks yummy. I've made one with avocado but we'll be making this recipe. I've heard some other folks say uh, that they've made it with avocado as well. So that sounds really, I haven't tried it, but it sounds really interesting. And I guess when the avocado, you know, avocados start turning brown really quickly, but you wouldn't be able to see it if it's hidden underneath cocoa powder. So um, I'm imagining that one would keep pretty well too. Sid, Sid loves blueberries on top of this mousse. I'm so glad you like the mousse too. Fresh or frozen. Oh, that's good. I hadn't thought about putting frozen fruit on it. Um, I'm even, now that you said that, Sid, I'm even thinking about uh, frozen peaches. Summer fresh peaches would be even better. But y'all, I've got a fly. He's crawling on me. Um, they're com coming in because it's so cold outside. Um, and uh, Larissa, you love vanilla. I do too. Anytime a recipe calls for vanilla, uh, like if it calls for a teaspoon, I'll put a tablespoon. I really do increase it whether I'm baking and making muffins or whatever. Um, I absolutely love vanilla, and so I I tend to go overboard with that. Bonnie, um, what you couldn't get what to come up? You gave gave up and started shopping. Glad you checked again. I wonder what you couldn't get to come up. These um, these comments may be coming up in a different order, so I'm not sure. Uh, what you couldn't get to come up. 
But I'm glad you're. I'm glad you were able to get busy shopping. Oh, my sister saying I bet it was me. So I don't have a clue. I don't know that conversation that's going on. Um, Shelly, love your videos and recipes. Thank you, Shelly Elmore. That's so sweet. I am so glad that the videos and the recipes are helpful. Um, oh, is that my Wanda? There's my Wanda. Hi, Wanda. I'm glad you're on here. I hope you and Lavon are doing well. Uh, and I'm glad to see Wanda actually got to do my in-person classes at a uh, hospital, that uh, heart center actually, I think you did it at the heart center, that I taught classes at regularly. She and her husband, a couple or, it would have been a couple, oh my goodness, time is flying, a few years ago were in my classes, so I'm glad you're on here too. Um, but yeah, and yes, she did put up, uh, somebody just asked about the tofu press. My sister did put up the tofu press. Uh, so you can get it, and I like it. I mean, uh, it, like I said, you don't have to have one uh, because you can use a cast iron pan or something like that. But, you know, I found myself going through a lot of paper towels because I put a towel and then paper towels when I was doing it that way. And this way, all of the liquid goes into this container, and so I'm just going to pour it down the drain and not waste paper towels because even those are not cheap anymore. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm trying to think, are you guys ready for Christmas? When I was talking to the ghost uh, uh, participants, I asked them <laughs> if they were decorated. So are you guys decorated? The ghost people didn't answer me. <laughs> Have you decorated? I finally got decorated for Christmas. I got my tree up and I think in the coming weeks, since we're getting so close to um, Christmas, I'm gonna pop in occasionally with a video maybe a live I'm not sure it won't be anything that's really planned and it won't be a cooking demo that I know of uh, off the top of my head I'm thinking we'll probably just pop in and I'm going to show you my decorations and um, just you know wish you a Merry Christmas and all that kind of stuff so we'll be doing things like that to keep in touch but I'm curious what do you guys have going on are you going to a lot of family get-togethers do you have your menus planned already I have we actually have a family gathering Saturday here at my house it's my side of the family and I am making a uh, shepherd's lentil pie as my main and I'm going to make broccoli slaw or broccoli salad um, as a side and if any of you saw the chocolate um, balls that I put up maybe two weeks ago I'm making those because I tried them out on my sister and my mom and they had a fit over them and so I'm going to make chocolate balls for um, for our Christmas get together this coming Saturday and then we have we have more Christmas get togethers one more here and then we've got others to go in other people's houses um, but thank you sis for putting up the holiday recipes that should be very helpful um, can't wait to try Sharon says she can't wait to try my Christmas recipes. Thank you. I hope that you will love them. For, for Thanksgiving, I did the soy curl mock chicken casserole. And for Christmas, I'm doing the lentil shepherd's pie. Another one that goes over really well is the vegan meatloaf. So you can get on there. And, uh, and the link that my sister just put up has um, those. And there's also, I didn't think about that picture she just put up, has the seitan roast. You can make a roast if you want to. Sid, ask about Marley. Oh, Sid, you ask about Marley? I haven't seen that. Oh, wait, now I see it. Thank you for asking about her. She is doing much, much, much better. You really wouldn't even. Marley's my three-year-old German Shepherd, for those of you who do not know. I thought she might come in here, but she hasn't. Um, she does, she was borderline for something called, um, oh my goodness, it was a mouthful. Um, mask masticatory muscle myositis. How's that for a name? MMM. Um, God, that was the craziest thing. We knew something was going on with her because she wasn't eating well. And um, even when she went to bark, she would make a like a whine noise. Um, and we got her to the doctor and I thought it was going to be a tooth problem. I really did. Lord, I wish it would have been a tooth problem. Um, but it ended up they Put her, they sedated her, they put her to sleep, and they couldn't get her mouth open. They could only get it halfway open. And so they sedated her a little bit more to get her to relax more. It wouldn't open. She is sort of like lockjaw for people, but it's an autoimmune disease with dogs. And um, 
they put her on prednisone, really high doses of prednisone, and we've been tapering it down over the weeks, and she's uh, way down on it, and so she's doing really, really well. She is chewing like a champ now. She's barking like a champ now, <laughs> so it's really, really good. We're hoping she's going to come off of the medications completely. Uh, worst case scenario, we will find the lowest level that will keep it under control, and then we will maintain there, but I'm hoping and praying that um, she will come off of it completely because prednisone long-term is not good for anybody and dogs. It's got so many side effects. So um, if you don't mind, see it, say a prayer for Marley. I know she's just a dog, but she's my girl um, and my best buddy. So thank you so much for asking about her. That is just so sweet. We have the empty nest, you know, so, um, She's my constant, my hiking buddy, my everything, 24-7. I work from home, so she's with me always. Um, but yes, thank you, and we're, we're, praying for, um, we're praying for complete recovery from it. And uh, yeah, everything else. And my neck is um, doing just fine. We're still, um, still just being careful, you know what I mean? And still no major symptoms or anything. Um, that I will complain about because uh, it's nothing major just a stiff neck and we're just going to go with it um, and so yeah everything is everything is well I hope everything at your house is going well too like I said I'll be popping in uh, to wish you guys Merry Christmas and maybe show you what we're making um, my sister's working on a video she was here when we were making that Chex Mix did y'all see the Chex Mix again I mentioned Chex Mix before because we just posted that uh, Friday, uh, but I don't know if I was talking to the ghost audience or not, so, <laughs> um, if you haven't tried the Chex Mix, you gotta try it, so, uh, I think that was everything, I hope you guys are getting your Christmas, uh, menus together, look at what my sister Jenna Michelle put up, there's so many options for sides, desserts, main dishes, appetizers, stuffed, little stuffed mushrooms, and even, uh, baby, um, Barbecue carrots, they look exactly like, what do you call those things? Little smokies, you know, like you, people do for those little parties. But they're, they're, they're um, baby carrots, and they are so good. I'm not a cooked carrot lover. I love them raw. Um, and I'll eat them in a stir fry when they're still crunchy. But as far as really cooked carrot, I'm not a fan. But I love those little smoky uh, barbecue carrots. So that's another appetizer you might check out on the website and see. You can take it to a party or something. I think that's everything. We've got all the prizes given away. All you guys who won prizes, send me your address. And uh, the person who won the t-shirt, send me your size that you want and your address. And I will get these things out to you this week. And um, Clem says, is it a, ve a vegan version of pigs in a blanket? Sort of. Um... Pigs in a Blanket, if my memory serves me correct, wasn't that the Little Smokies wrapped in, um, like, the biscuits? So this isn't that. It's just the Little Smokies. Uh, but instead of being whatever they were, sausage or they weren't really sausage. It was just all that, you know. Um, but instead, it's carrots. But we're not wrapping them in anything, you know, like the blanket, the biscuit. Though, there are a number of bloggers who have biscuit recipes. I don't. Uh, but there are a number of bloggers who have biscuit recipes, and I bet you, Clem, that you could easily, if you made the little smoky carrots and then made, like, the biscuit dough from one of the other bloggers and wrapped it in there, then um, you could do pigs in a blanket. That would be actually pretty cool, um, and I think it would work very well. So uh, I think you should give it a try. If you do, take a picture <laughs> And put it up on the website uh, and uh, you can put it on here as a comment or you can message me with it and I'll put it up for you but yeah I would love to see how that goes you'll have to tell us which biscuit recipe that um, that you used if you decide to do that but I do love that idea um, Laura thank you again for the book and the links you're so welcome Laura thank you for tuning in thank you for being a part of our growing eat plant-based community. I love being able to check in with you guys and um, share things that I hope are helpful. And I love when you guys chime in like you're doing um, now. And we, we all learn together. And uh, 
Oh, Sid, so happy to hear that she's doing better. Thank you, Sid. It's a relief uh, that she is. Oh, there's Marlene Skeever. There, uh, Marlene took my classes too. You're late, but you're here. I'm glad you made it. And this will pop up, everybody, as a replay. You probably already know that, so you'll be able to watch it. And I'm going to put it up on YouTube too. So uh, anything that you missed, you can uh, you can. Uh, Check it. Oh, wait, there's Sharon. Sharon, chocolate balls were a big hit. Oh, so you already made them. That's awesome. Uh, they were a big hit with my mom, too. My mom is not plant-based, and she, before I took the, there were a few that I was going to take home, and she wanted them. So, <laughs> that's saying a lot coming from her. Um, so, try the chocolate balls, guys. Try the Chex Party Mix. All those scream. And the uh, little smoky carrots. Those all scream holidays to me. So hopefully you'll get um, you'll get some good ones that will become family traditions and maybe. Now, folks are not going to be fooled by the uh, barbecue carrots. Uh, they won't think that those are little smokies, but they will be fooled by the moose. They'll never know that it's vegan or has tofu in it. They won't. They will be fooled by the Chex Mix and by the uh, chocolate balls. Nobody that you feed those to will know. If you don't tell them, they're not going to know that they're a much healthier version. So, uh, Clem, decoration, your decorations were up right before Thanksgiving. Oh, that's cool. I did it, I think, like the weekend, like Saturday after Thanksgiving. Um, so, you couldn't get to the live video. Oh, and then... Bonnie Inman couldn't get to the live video. Uh, that's because we had technical difficulties, Bonnie. But um, hopefully everything is good and uh, will show up when you guys, anybody who wants to watch the replay, it'll, it will, uh, it will show up well. Ah, oh, Sharon made you. Sharon, you've made everything. She made the carrot smokies also, and yep, another big hit. Awesome! I love that. All right, guys. Um, I thought I missed somebody. I wanted to make sure I answered anybody who had said something. Oh, uh, it's my first time. Clem's first time here. Thanks again and looking forward to trying your recipes and to joining future videos. Thank you. All right, guys. Like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be popping in. Be looking for me between now uh, and Christmas. Popping in. And who knows what we're going to be doing. I don't have a plan, so that means we truly don't know. It could be anything. But um, we will be seeing you anytime. Please feel free to message me, uh, private message me, or email me. And, um, and you know, I'll try to help any way that I can. You guys take care. Have a very Merry Christmas. And I hope that all of your meals are going to make people just go, oh, I love it. And I hope that your whole family will be happy too. So you guys take care and we will see you soon. Merry Christmas. Early.